bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His, His mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. Is it not ourselves that we proclaim? We proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For the same God who said, out of darkness let light shine, has caused his light to shine within us to give the light of revelation, the revelation of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, 
They are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord.
reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. 
By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is very odd. I won't lie. How do we have a service that remembers the Lord's Supper without having the Lord's Supper? How do we have the service that is about servant and servanthood and serving each other and washing each other's feet without being able to wash feet? How do we do it? And yet here we are. Here we are. We tell the story. We say the prayers. We hear the songs, and we remember love. Bishop Anne very brilliantly said in her sermon for Palm Sunday and her blog post this past week, it's not about the palms. So tonight, it's not about the feet. Thank you, Bishop Anne. <laughs> Our friend Bishop Curry has also famously said, if it's not about love, it's not about God. And tonight, it is about love. Now, washing the feet is important. The Eucharist is important because those are symbols for us of how we both experience and how we share God's love. Symbols are necessary. We need those symbols, especially during this week to illustrate very clearly for us what God's love looks like. Those symbols take those stories that we just heard read and turn them into tangible, concrete realities that we can taste and we can feel and we can experience in a bodily sense. Except those symbols don't work right now. We're staying six feet apart from each other. We're not leaving our homes, which is a way that right now we are showing love. We are showing love for one another, ironically, by staying away from one another. If it's not about love, it's not about God. The, the symbols, symbols are wonderful, and, and our symbols are meaningful and draw us closer to God because they point us in the direction of a larger reality, of something that is bigger than us. But perhaps if we've learned nothing else from this experience, it is that the symbol is not the thing. The thing is God's love. Love is the thing. So, so we show our love for one another as we wash feet. And perhaps the symbol tonight for us is a greater appreciation for our altar guilds out there who make this service possible every year, arranging all the different symbols for us, putting the infrastructure in place, all the behind the scenes work that make these symbols possible for us. So maybe the absence of that helps us point to these people who serve church in a particularly beautiful and loving way. So if we can't experience the symbols the way we traditionally do so, how, what might be our symbols for these things tonight? Washing feet. If it's not about actually washing someone's feet, how is it that we show in our lives this great servanthood of laying down our lives for one another, of caring for one another, for suddenly expanding from beyond our own little tribe, which is where we're kind of stuck right now, quite frankly, with our own little family unit, out into the wider world 
for the well-being of all. What is our symbol of that this night? I guess another way to put that is, how would you wash feet without washing someone's feet? And remembering that Eucharist, that, that first, last supper, experiencing the sacraments in that way. And right now, we feel, I believe, very keenly the absence of that sacrament, of not being able to gather together and to leave the communion rail with the taste of the communion bread on our tongue, with the lingering smell of the wine in our nose, with that tangible sense of God's love. So perhaps tonight, the question for us to consider and reflect is, what other ways do we experience that sense of being fed, being held, and being nurtured by God? Another thing, too, that occurs to me about how we are to experience this service, the mandi, the mandate that we love, as Jesus tells us to love one another as he has loved us, that we are being reminded that loving our neighbor means loving our actual neighbor. It is actually the people on our street the people in our neighborhood who are probably the only people we're really seeing these days. How do we know them? How do we love them? How do we care for them during this time, maintaining proper social distancing, of course. But to love our neighbor, who is that close to us, I believe is actually a harder thing to do than to love someone who is far away. To come and encounter daily those little things that rub up against us. And certainly I think we could say this about if we are uh, isolating at home with other family members. Those things that we do to one another. It's hard to love those people sometimes. How do we love our neighbors who are our actual neighbors? And I think finally... This time, <laughs> this living in the midst of a global pandemic, that the sign of love is actually staying away from each other and maintaining this physical distance from one another. For me, it has taught me that yes, love is essential, but our symbols are important too. Let me say it like this. There's, there's been a meme, you've probably seen it going around, that says uh, if, when we, we can't worship here in the building, but that's okay because the church the, is not a building. The church is the people. And I absolutely believe that wholeheartedly, without a doubt. The people of God can gather and worship together whether they have a building or no. But by not being able to gather in our buildings, I feel it points to us that our buildings are important to us. Our buildings, our physical spaces that we care for with our hands, with our shared resources, with our own sweat equity, these places are important to us. It is meaningful to be able to stand here at the altar and say this to you rather than saying it from my home. To, to take all of this stuff off the altar is really for me a physical representation of what we have been living into these past how many weeks now. Now, does this mean the building becomes more important? Does it mean the stuff, the symbols become more important? No, if it's not about love, it's not about God, right? If our building is not helping us to worship and praise God and therefore to help love one another, then no. But if our buildings, if we can get down to the essentials 
of what it is that helps us do that. I believe God is praised. So what is essential for you this night? What is essential in your life for you to experience God? What does that look like? And just love one another, friends. I think that's all we can do at the end of the day. Just love one another. Amen. This night, we gather as the household of God, apostles, prophets, martyrs, servants, to pray for the church and all humankind, saying, Come, Lord Jesus. For refugees, for the homeless, and for all who have nowhere to lay their head, we pray, Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For those who have no food on their table this night, we pray, Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. For the body of Christ, fractured in a world of violence and fear, we pray, Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For those who betray, and for those whom they betray, we pray, Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. For ourselves, who fast from the Lord's table, as we celebrate the Lord's Passover this night, we pray, Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. For all who work in health care, nurses, doctors, technicians, cleaning staff, nursing assistants, caregivers, administrators, chaplains, and all those who are working for the health and well-being of us all, we pray, Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For the sick and the suffering in our community, especially Bill, Charlotte, Diane, Don, Don, Frank, Jack, Jane, Janie, and Karen. We pray for Marion, Mary, Mary, Maxine, Michael, Ron and those we name now. We pray, come, come Lord Jesus. Jesus. For our friends, family, and neighbors, especially Anna Rose, Anne Marie, Audrey, Barbara, Bill, Charlene, Claudette, Dan, Danny, Diane, Don, Duncan, Eddie, and Gemma. We ask for healing for George, Helen, Henry, James, Jane, Janice, Jason, Jalen, Jeanette, Joanna, and JR. We pray for Julia, Justin, Kathleen, Keith, Kelvin, Kenneth, Kenny, Kevin, Kyle, Marcy, Millie, Nick, Patricia, and Rob. We lift up Rodney, Roger, Roy, Ryan, Sandy, Sarah, 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 Sean, Shannon, Shirley, Stephanie, Stephanie, Sonia, Vivian, Vaughn, Wayne, Zuzu, and those we name now. We pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For all expecting a child, especially John and Geneva, we pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For all who have died, especially Phyllis Cross Barnwell, Charles Willingberg, John Johnson, and those we name now, we pray. Come, Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Almighty God, we recall the wonders you worked for our ancestors, and we marvel at the love shown us by your Son. Hear us as we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers and mothers, creator of the changes of day and night, giving rest to the weary, renewing the strength of those who are spent, bestowing upon us the occasions of song in the evening. As you have protected us in the day that is past, so be with us in the coming night. Keep us from every sin, every evil, and every fear, for you are our light and salvation and the strength of our life. To you be glory for endless ages. Amen. Amen. 